fellow historians, my name is Captain Wyatt Brown. And I'm Captain Rose Horsewell, and Captain Brown and I are both with the Department of History at USMA. And we're here today with Miss Marlena Cook from the West Point Museum, taking a look at some really interesting artifacts that originated from the Crimean War in the 1850s on the, on the other side of the world. And so a little bit of background, the Crimean War began in 1853, and it was between the Russian Empire and the Ottoman Empire primarily. The British and the French also assisted the Ottomans. And so um, some of the things that we're looking at today are photojournalism from that war and uh, cadet drawing from the drawing classes that the cadets used to take here that was based off of one of the prints that made it all the way from Crimea back to the United States for the cadets to use during class. So Marlena, can you tell us something about these, uh, these photos? Sure, absolutely. So as you mentioned, Crimea, the Crimean War was the first documented war um, where civilian artists and civilian photographers were sent um, to actually show what war looked like um, to, back to the civilian populations around the world. Um, so in this case, the British um, dispatched two photographers to Crimea. Um, one was Fenton and the other one was Robertson. Um, this photo album is from Robertson. Um, he took these photos um, at the siege of Sevastopol. Um, and so he was the last photographer in Crimea at the time. Um, so these photos traveled around the world um, and were popular in newspapers um, internationally. And then Secondly is a cadet drawing from a cadet, the class of 1856. Um, so the cadet drawing program here at West Point was one of only two required courses that cadets had to take when the academy started in 1802. Um, cadets had to be able to document what they saw um, on the field of battle, and they actually had to document what the landscape looked like. So cadets had to copy many things in order to understand how to um, exactly reproduce what they saw in the field. Um, so this is one example. And so in 1855, this cadet was in a drawing class and this print that he was copying from was actually sent from an artist, um, a British artist. He was in Crimea at the time. Um, he sent his drawing back to London and a lithographer printed the print and it went into a book that made its way around the world. Um, so this print is actually from a book that's in the USMA Special Collections at the library. You can go see it today. Um, and then this cadet actually uh, faithfully reproduced it with watercolor. So we will be introducing James McPherson into our discussion about the American Civil War. We're going to tie in these artifacts with that discussion. So the Foreign Observer Team that was sent to the Crimea by the United States, these are individuals that have been legally designated to observe a foreign conflict and learn lessons. And that team included a number of officers, but the youngest was a gentleman by the name of George McClellan. And McClellan, as a young observer, actually arrived in the Crimea after most of the major actions had ceased. But what McClellan did observe was the good order and discipline, the training, the organization, and the sustainment of primarily the British and French armies that were operating in and around Sebastopol. And he took those lessons back to the United States and wrote a report for Congress and kind of detailed all of the lessons learned that he had observed with his team in the Crimea. And with the outbreak of the American Civil War in 1861, McClellan, because of the special knowledge and observations that he had experienced in the Crimea, was recalled to service. And he was appointed to essentially supreme command very early in the war of the Union war effort. And as we read McPherson, I want you to think about McClellan in two ways, and specifically about these artifacts as they impressioned him and his running of the war effort and how that impacts soldiers' motivations in the American Civil War. The first is McClellan took that deliberate organization, that deliberate sustainment, that deliberate skill that was made in creating those British and French armies and tried to apply it to these new armies of volunteers that had been raised in the United States. He wanted an army that was disciplined, trained, and modeled and organized like the European armies he had observed in the Crimea. That's important for a major reason. As we read these soldiers' letters and diaries, they have a sense of purpose. They have a sense of feeling, especially these Union soldiers, right? McClellan's ideas pervade throughout the entire Union army by the middle part of the war. 
And that sense of belonging that these soldiers experience by looking like a soldier, by acting like a soldier, by feeling like a soldier, I want you to look for that as you read through these accounts of these soldiers and how they develop from a citizen to perhaps a soldier and as we explore that term in the context of the American Civil War. Second thing I want you to look for is the nature of war as McPherson describes it. The nature of war, as you can see here observed by uh, individuals who experienced the Crimean conflict, the nature of war in the 19th century was changing and that change was going to impact how soldiers responded and reacted on the battlefield, in camp, and just their general motivations for sustaining the American Civil War on both sides, specifically here on the Union side. And the changing nature of war impacts these soldiers' motivations towards the end of the conflict especially. And that's really when McPherson ties in this developing evolutionary process that is the art of war with the individual motivations that soldiers experience in combat and in the field. So I want you to think about what McClellan might have observed through this fantastic artifact that we have here, this portrayal of soldiers behind this earthwork, looking at the enemy, waiting, unsure of what's going to happen next. And try to apply that when you read about Union soldiers or Confederate soldiers fighting in 1864 or 1865, locked in this gridlock as this nature of warfare changes and evolves throughout the American Civil War. Yeah, those are those are great points, Captain Brown. Thank you for for bringing us into this this story of how the Civil War was impacted by by the Crimean War. And it's important to remember that amid all of this changing nature of warfare, with some of the earthen works you see here and the same types of battle positions that similarly appear during the own, our own American Civil War, there's the human element that's always at the center of that. And military observers like George McClellan and others have been traveling around the world to see how other armies wage war and bring the lessons that they've learned back to the American army to implement them in our own institutions. And this has continued through to today. And so this is just a small glimpse at a product of military observation that has impacted West Point from the Black Sea region and the Crimean Peninsula. And I hope you enjoyed this. And thank you for joining. Sure. Um, thank you for joining us, Marlena. And Captain Brown and I are going to be seeing you all in class.